Okay, so this is section 3.1, which is exponential and logistic functions. We're going to talk about exponential functions and their graphs, the natural base E, logistic functions and their graphs, and population models. Okay, so exponential functions, um, A and B are real number constants, and the exponential function would be in the form f of x equals A times B to the x. So, and it says where a is non-zero, b is positive, and b does not equal 1. And the constant a is the initial value, so the a value is your starting value. And the b is the um, growth or decay rate. So if b is greater than 1, it's going to be growth. If b is between 0 and 1, it will be decay. Okay, so our first example, we're going to find an exponential function from a table of values. So we're going to look at this table first. Here we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. We have 4 ninths, 4 thirds, 4, 12, 36. Okay. So when you're looking at exponential models, you want to determine what are you multiplying by each time. So if you look here, you can tell that we are multiplying by 3 for every step of our y, our y values. So we're multiplying by 3, so that is our rate. So this would be g of x equals our starting value. We can find our y-intercept is 4 times 3 to the x. So that would be the equation for that table. So then our next table we're going to look at we have 128, 32, 8, 2, and 1 half. So you can tell here what are we multiplying by each time. It kind of looks like we're dividing but we want to write it in terms of multiplication. So you can tell that we're multiplying by one-fourth each time. So this function would be h of x equals our starting value, our y-intercept is 8 times one-fourth to the x. So that would be how we write a function based on a table. Okay, next example we're talking about transformations. So um, each of these graphs, we're going to talk about how are they transformed from the parent function f of x equals 2 to the x. So similar to the h, k, and a value that we've looked at with many different functions, um, if you have a plus or minus in the exponent with the x, so this is x minus 1, this is going to be a shift to the right one. Okay, here we have a negative with the x, so we know that's going to be a reflection, and since it's with the x and not out front of the whole function, it's going to be a reflect over the y-axis. Okay, and then finally, the 3 out front is going to be a vertical stretch, it's like our a value, vertical stretch by factor of 3. Okay, so those are our transformations. If we, we'll look in a minute, if we have numbers outside of the 2 to the x, that would be a shift up and down. Um, and we'll look at those examples, like I said, in a couple slides here. Okay, so the natural base E, so this is a fancy way of describing what E is. So this is saying the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. So one way to kind of figure this out is you could plug in a really big number for x because this is saying as x goes to infinity. So you could plug in 999 or you could plug in 9,999,000. So plug in a super big number to figure out approximately what e is equal to. So e is 2.718, oops. To eight and it keeps going. So you have an E button on your calculator um, and E is used with our exponential functions as well. So it's kind of like it's kind of like a value like pi. Um, you have that button on your calculator. This little um, limit here explains 
where e came from. Okay. So exponential functions, so if we have an exponential function in the form a times b to the x, we can write it, it can be rewritten as f of x equals a times e to the kx. So, and k is going to be a constant, and then we talk about if a is greater than zero and k is greater than zero, then it's going to be exponential growth. If a is greater than zero and k is less than zero, then it's going to be exponential decay. And here is a figure of that. So this is where we have, so assuming a is positive for both of these, if k is greater than zero, we have growth. If k is less than zero, we have decay. Okay, so now we're going to talk about transformations with this equation, so we, with our value e. Um, so we have f of x equals e to the x, and then we're describing the transformations. So if we have a plus 2 up in the exponent, that means we're going to shift it left 2. If our negative is out front, so remember in the last example we had a negative up with the x in the exponent, that was a reflection over the y-axis. But this, because the negative is for the whole function, this would be a reflect over the x-axis. Okay, and then finally, this is what we were talking about earlier. If I have a minus 1, it's not in the exponent with the x. So if we have values in the exponent with the x, that's left and right. And then if we have minus 1, that just tells us it's a shift down 1. So those are transformations. So the last thing is talking about logistic growth functions. So logistic growth functions are connected to exponential because they both start out looking exponential. So this, um, here's our equations that we can use for logistic growth functions. So you can see this little picture down here on the left, an exponential growth model versus a logistic growth model. So there is a carrying capacity. There's a value where you... Um, kind of limit out. So when we were doing the modeling activity for chapter one and we were looking at the growth of Starbucks stores, that followed, we used both an exponential um, regression model and we used a logistic growth model. So we know that eventually the number of stores can't keep growing exponentially forever. So we're going to finally reach a point where we're not adding that many new stores and it starts to kind of level off and that would be logistic. The other thing, it's always interesting to connect these math concepts with real life situation. So this picture on the right is actually the, um, the growth model for COVID-19 in Belgium. So a lot of illnesses, viruses follow the logistic growth model because we know that eventually it's going to level off. So you can see it always starts off looking exponential, but we know realistically at some point, hopefully soon, this is going to level off. And so um, the blue is the total cases, the red is the hospitalizations, and the green is new cases. So we know that as the new cases go down, then the total cases are going to start to level off and the hospitalizations will level off. So just a little real life connection to what logistic growth functions are going to look like. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.